So I thought I'd start off with um, a couple of the business drivers. So these are reasons that people move towards atrium discovery and dependency mapping. And because that's a really long word, I'll probably just say atrium discovery going forward. So you may find as we're going through these um, that one of these, yep, kind of is the bucket that you're, you're um, most susceptible to, or it could be several of them, or it could be all of them. But again, these are the ones that we've seen really driving people um, towards atrium discovery. So the first one there is increase in business impact. And what we're doing there is many people have applications. They may have a handle on what IT resources those applications are installed but they may not. So really what we're doing at this point, and you'll be able to see this clearly with the, uh, the dependency mapping piece, is how and where do these critical business applications reside in my environment? Um, many people have heard of they've got the, uh, the legacy application that's running on the operating system that's no longer supported. And so being aware of that is critical. And again, those are going to be some things that you can see. But again, um, increasing the business impact, understanding what IT resources my applications reside on. The second one is reducing IT cost. And so here what we're doing, we say um, identifying legacy and underutilized resources, opportunities for consolidation. So um, again, readily you'll be able to see your uh, infrastructure out there and which ones maybe aren't being used to their full capacity. And so again, as you start to do your consolidation, those may be the machines uh, servers that you consolidate faster because, again, they're only um, housing one application and so it's not getting the most use or you're not getting the most bang out of your buck with it only doing the one. So the consolidation, again, we're going to see quickly which IT resources are housing these applications, minimizing the impact of change. And so what we'll see here quickly is how ADDM HM Discovery can be utilized by the other BSM applications. And so if you subscribe to a service desk, you have changes that you have to implement, you don't want to do a change and not realize um, the risk associated with performing that change in the environment. So what we'll be able to see is um, here is my business critical app application. Here's the hardware it resides on. We need to do a patch to this server, so let me make sure that we have a contingency plan in the event that this server does not come back up. With the HM Discovery, you'll quickly be able to see what's going to be the impact of me doing this change if something goes wrong. Um, the fourth one there is the um, enabling of my compliance controls. And so what we'll see with this piece is uh, several things. So um, companies sometimes get audited on the software that's running in the environment. With Atrium Discovery, there's no agent involved, so I can quickly scan my environment, see what software exists on the machines in my environment. The other thing that you'll be able to see is that information I can then reconcile to the CMDB where I have any of my contractual information. So I'm saying that we have 1,000 copies of Office. I've done my discovery, and I can see 900 installed. We're in compliance. When it goes the other route is where you need to start taking some, some action. So if you're over-licensed, then what are you going to do to get back in compliance? But again, with this quick discovery, you'll be able to see that. The last one is managing the virtualization in the data center. And so again, really quickly, when I do my discovery, I can see, hey, we have an initiative to get 60% of our servers virtualized. And with this quick discovery, I'm able to see, well, I'm 30% of the way there, so I've got really another 30%. But you'll be able to, again, quickly scan the environment and determine which of the servers out there are physical and then which ones are virtual, and then help progress you towards any of your virtualization initiatives. Okay, so again, that's really quickly um, some of the drivers that we've seen moving people to atrium discovery. How does it help IT achieve operational excellence? And so um, anyone who has subscribed to BSM Business Service Management from BMC is familiar with this wheel, but essentially I'm able to utilize the information that I've gathered from ADDM and have that available to like my request and support. So that's the application that's allowing me to do my changes. So it basically is getting any of those dependencies that I've discovered and I'm populating that so that my change 
uh, team now knows, again, what the impact is going to be of those changes. As you work your way around the wheel, you can see how the automation group is able to utilize this information. My um, proactive net or my um, service assurance applications are going to be able to, to utilize this information by building up of service models. So again, that's the mappings that are derived from ADDM populating these other um, solutions or solution sets from BMC. Now, while I am showing uh, the BMC or the BSM will understand that because that data um, is in a database, I can port it to the CMDB or reconcile it to the CMDB while it can be used by other applications. It's not limited to just BMC applications. Anyone is able to consume that data that I've got into the um, CMDB. Okay, so what differentiates Atrium Discovery from other solutions that are in the, uh, the marketplace out there? And so a couple things that I'll point out here. The first one being um, ADDM ships as a virtual appliance and it's agentless. So what that means is out of the box, we're providing you with an appliance that already has the operating system, it already has the database, it has the software, Atrium Discovery already installed. So really, you're giving it the IP address, configuring your discovery um, rules, the scopes that you want, and you're on your way. Again, it's agentless, so we may require some credentials to get into the Windows environments, credentials to get into your Unix environment, or the credentials for your SNMP devices. But once we've seeded the appliance with that data, your discoveries can take place. The second differentiator is the dashboards, the reports that are um, available out of the box. Now, the dashboard is unique because you'll notice during the demonstration there are, um, I don't know, maybe about 13 different dashboards that we present you, and you can customize those to what data you find useful or what initiatives you want um, presented to you when you come into the console. They're very easy to customize. Again, we've given you about 13 out of the box where you can configure how you see fit. Um, the reports, you'll notice as I go through the demonstration, the reports are specific to whatever item you're looking at. So you don't have to go to the reports and kind of peruse through there and find one that may fit what it is you're looking for. As you're in the console, it's going to tell you which reports are relevant to the data that you're looking at real time. The second, oh, I'm sorry, the last thing there is the Google-like search, so um, I'll go through a couple of these, but really that's me putting in just a few characters and then anything in the estate that matches those characters is returned to me. And then, of course, at that point I can dig in and get the data that I need. Third differentiator is what we call data provenance. And so we're saying data accuracy you can verify and trust. But what that means is when we're doing our discoveries and we return you something that says, hey, this is a server 2008 box with this service pack, it's running this software, you're like, well, how did you get that information? We have the ability with this provenance to show you the queries or the scripts that we ran against that device to return these information. So it's real time, um, here's what we ran so that you can see what's being returned. The, the next one there is the collaborative application mapping. And so out of the box, there are um, a lot of business applications that we know about. We've written the maps for. We know what to search for and how to, um, if you will, build up any of those dependencies. But you probably have your own custom applications for your organization that we're going to allow you to build a map for as well. So you kind of extend that beyond just the business level applications that we're providing out of the box, which, by the way, is updated on a monthly basis, and create your own application maps for your, again, company-specific applications. And then the last one there is built on the BMC Atrium architecture. So I talk about or it talks about um, the seamless share of information, and again, it's because any of the BMC applications natively consume that data that's in the CMDB, and that's, an, uh, if you will, a differentiator for any of the BMC-specific applications that you have in-house. Okay, so here we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. 
some of my key capabilities. So um, we'll kind of start in the upper left. So the discovery, again, physical, virtual applications, network devices, like I alluded to before, um, anything that's responding to WMI, the SSH, SNMP. If you want to um, import data in, you can do that as well. If you need to connect to other data sources to pull information, again, all doable. The next piece is my um, analysis. So there is where we're creating the relationships. We observe communications between different machines. We do the automatic groupings, but it basically at that point we're analyzing any of the uh, data that we've discovered. The last piece there is the integration. And again, can't hit this point enough because natively all this information is going to be available to these other applications, allowing you to build any of your application maps. So again, those are some of my key capabilities with Atrium Discovery. Now here we talk um, about the flexibility of my discovery. We've mentioned um, under that breadth and extensibility, I've hit most of those. The one last thing you'll see there is mainframe. And so this has an asterisk because it's an add-on, but if um, discovering your mainframe environment is part of your discovery initiative, that again is going to be doable by HM Discovery with that one add-on. Um, unmatched usability, uh, out of the box, really the only thing that I haven't hit there is a 200 plus reports. So again, a lot of data there. If you need to create additional reports, you can do that. The database is yours um, to do as you see fit. The last one, the reference library. So this one, again, is an add-on, part of the extended data pack. What's key here is um, we bring into our console or into the appliance this software end-of-life information. So for example, Microsoft has been in the business of creating operating systems for two decades. They have NT4 out there and the latest operating system, whoa, what is it, Windows 8, Server 2008. But what you'll be able to see is, hey, in our environment, we're running an NT machine. I'm at risk by doing that because the vendor, Microsoft, ended the extended support on that five years ago. So if anything goes wrong with that operating system, we're on our own. Again, it's good visible information because that alerts you that you need to try to get whatever applications um, still reside on that box and get them into the latest one so that you're not running your critical applications on unsupported operating systems. Um, that goes beyond the operating system, though. You'll see that for things like Oracle, so databases, again, the older databases not being supported by the vendor, and then, again, moving those up into the uh, later versions of that particular database. Hardware power consumption, again, another one, especially in the data center. So quickly I'm going to be able to see which machines I have out there in the data center. Um, they may be a little bit archaic, but they may be utilizing a lot of power, a lot of um, compute, um, consuming a lot of watts. That information, part of the extended data pack, end goal there, once I see that, those are going to be candidates to move from that physical maybe to the virtual, but basically getting them off of that um, archaic hardware. Um, so here if we kind of dig into this a little bit, um, this unmatched usability, really you may hear if you've seen any of these demonstrations, it talks about two clicks to view um, the detailed information. So it's dropped us on this infrastructure summary. I'm hitting the host, so that's my one click. I get all my hosts listed here in the lower part. I can click on a specific host, and then I'm into that detailed hardware and software. We'll go through this during the demonstration, but again, just a, key of the, a few key points to, to note. Um, the data accuracy, so I talked about the provenance. Where did you get this data from? So what you'll notice on the right part of the screen here, um, and these are all hyperlinks, so I can click and see I got that from that host file or that host um, script that's running. I click and it shows me immediately what scripts, what queries we may be running against that device to return that information. Um, here it's pointing out just a specific version came from a discover command. Again, I'm able to see the command that was executed, and then I have the result of that command. So no arbitrarily getting information. It's data that's coming directly back from that device. 